Welcome again. Let me take you back to the early 2000s when I started making music with Magic's Music Maker. Yeah, that was software that I used a lot around 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. Kind of started making music with that uh, on my Windows 98 computer and later uh, my mom's Pentium 4. And it was actually quite fantastic software. It was quite easy to use and it was loop based. Uh, it came with a massive collection of samples, but nowadays I have much better software. Uh, such as Cork Gadget on my iPad and Cubase Elements on my PC. But hey, what if we just do a little experiment, kind of creating a little track uh, in Cubase using some of those old samples from Magix. Uh, so let me show you what the software kind of was like. I don't have it installed on this computer, but I have it on an old Pentium 4. But I just want to kind of show you the packaging and what it looks like. So this was my first one, uh, Music Maker Generation 6. Uh, I think this was released in the year 2000. And the system requirements say, well you can see them here actually. Pentium 200, uh, 32 megabytes of memory, 100 megabytes of free hard disk space, 800 by 600 resolution, 16-bit graphics card, a 16-bit sound card, CD-ROM drive and a Microsoft compatible mouse. And it would work with Windows 95, 98, 2000, Millennium Edition and NT. Well, it doesn't list Windows XP because that one wasn't released yet. But um, yeah, this is the back of the box here. And this is kind of the front. I mean, you could have uh, 48 stereo tracks and you could also uh, do video with this software. Uh, you had some virtual instruments and karaoke stuff. And well, here's a screenshot at the back, what it looked like. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much a consumer oriented software and it was not that expensive. It was like a hundred guilders. This was before the Euro era. Um, nowadays it probably would cost about maybe 40 euros. And then this uh, box folds open like so. So you can kind of see uh, all of its features. For instance here is the uh, user interface. And a lot of uh, other stuff. It really has a uh, typical Y2K aesthetic to it. Uh, yeah, it's quite nostalgic in a way. Uh, also, you could win a Panasonic Hi-Fi set, which was worth 800 guilders. Uh, I guess if you were good enough to whip up something with the software, you could uh, mail it in perhaps and win that thing. And also, there were various uh, sound expansion packs called Sound Pulse. Uh, I don't have those for this particular version, but um, yeah, you could use them of later versions as well. And um, yeah, you actually got um, some sound pools with this software. There are like th uh, three CD-ROMs in this box. So let's open it up. And I have to be a bit careful because the box opens up like so. Here's the manual. And here are the uh, CDs that are included with it. And I think this one is the program disc. And these are like the two sound libraries. So that was Music Maker Generation 6, but I didn't end there. Later I bought Music Maker 2003 uh, and this one has a lot of 80s stuff in it that I used a lot for creating tracks and I will uh, show you a few of those what I made with this. And the user interface, well yeah, it's kind of the same but improved a little bit. It has a few more features. Yeah, it was pretty much loop based software. And I also have this sound pool collection uh, that I bought along with it. Uh, yeah, and this one actually has more 80s stuff. It's called uh, Strictly 80s. That's the one that I use the most. Uh, and well, they all are royalty free loops. Professional 16 bit CD quality in 44.1 kHz WAV files. For any system that supports WAV format. But as we will see, those loops, even though they um, have a certain tempo, they don't actually fit on the grid all that nicely. Uh, there's something about that, but we'll get to that later. 
So let's open up Cubase and I've already got this little uh, 80s drum beat that I got from those sound pool collections. A uh, problem with that is that those clips don't actually fit nicely on the grid even though they're supposed to be 120 BPM. Well, and I just repeated those, but let's have a little sample of what I actually created with Magix back in the day. So here I have the uh, music that I made with Music Maker back in the day. Most of them were made with version 2003, although there's one or two that I think were made with uh, generation 6. Uh, the more 80s oriented ones were made with the later version of the program. What you will notice is that I reuse a lot of the same sort of loops and drum patterns. And that I think a lot of it kind of sounds alike. And that I kind of mix and mash things from different genres and styles, even though they had totally different BPMs. Uh, one of the reasons why I made a lot of these tracks was I needed background music. Background music for games that I programmed with Div Game Studio. So yeah, that was a big motivator to create them. This one is called Game Over, and it is uh, quite the odd one out here. It is quite laid back in tempo. A track called In Game One. Hmm, there's some Roland D50 uh, keys in there. Let's see if it has any rhythm. Yeah, it does have a rhythm. What about in-game 2? Oh, let's rewind that one. The thing is, sometimes the different clips work well together, but in all the instances they totally clash. And it was quite a challenge to find clips that actually work well together. This one starts kind of laid back with a guitar and some Roland D50 keys. Now you kind of start hearing the bass. Oh, this one is very different. Yeah, this one is probably made with version 2003 because it had some rock oriented uh, samples and loops. Kind of hard hitting metal style drums. Um, let's check this one out. Oh, this one is quite trancy. Trancy, but with an 80s beat. Man, I haven't heard this one in years. Ooh. Very trancy in the beginning. Remember, trance music was all the race in the early 2000s. If there's one musical style that has that Y2K aesthetic, it is trance.
this is a little bit different. A strange mix of a bit of techno beat with a uh, kind of slower tempo. You see that some of the things don't really blend well together. They kind of clash. Yeah, this one is uh, with the rock drums again. Yeah, familiar. But that one also before. There are some tracks in there that are kind of doubles. And this is a sort of laid back hip hop style track with a slow tempo. I thought this would work for like a sort of menu selection screen in a game perhaps. Oh, this one has a very low sound quality. Uh, I think this one may have been made with uh, Music Maker uh, Generation 6. So that was it, uh, a taste of the different things that I made with Music Maker. Now let's jump into Cubase and see what we can make. So here I have the sound pool library with all the sounds. And here is a little file called bpm.inf and it says tempo bpm equals 120. And there's some other miscellaneous info that the software used. And if you go to a different kind of genre, uh, it will use a different tempo and other scales. So 120 BPM, well, um, that's exactly what I have here, but as you can see, a single um, little clip does not actually adhere nicely to the grid. It doesn't repeat like properly. If this is supposedly 120 BPM, uh, yeah, why doesn't it fit properly here? Uh, there's something weird with it, with those uh, original loops. Okay, I have this uh, little drum thing here. It's a bit repetitive. Maybe we can add something else to it. What about a nice little synth pad? Import audio file. So let's look at some 80s pads. This one is pretty nice. A dark pad. I think I'll stick with the first one. Let's drag it in here. So that one is pretty nice. So let's repeat this one a couple of times. And as you can see here, it well, yeah, the way it lines up with the grid, it's not quite right. Uh, I doubt if all of these uh, samples are properly 120 BPM. Let's delete some. I just need to make sure that it lines up nicely here with the beginning. And then let's repeat it. Well, it seems like after three repeats it kind of fits but not properly. Ah, Oh, that's annoying. Well, um, let's also insert some other pad sound. So, analog pad. I want it right there. So, let's repeat this a few times. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, well maybe it could use uh, some other elements and I'm just gonna put the cursor 
at uh, well a bit of an eyeballed place. I'm just gonna eyeball it because none of these loops uh, adhere to the grid, even though they're supposedly 120 BPM. Import. Um, let's add some keys, perhaps. Oh, I think this is nice. Let's drag that here. So, some keys. Uh, maybe we could also add like, like another variation of it. So drag it in, that is a uh, Roland D50, oh that sounds a bit like a Fairlight. You know this one is alright. Also let's repeat this one because I think it's uh, Oh, I don't want to put it there. Hmm. So let's repeat this a bit. Right, let's see what we've got. Let's go to the beginning. Yikes, none of that stuff blends well together. Uh, <laughs> it's already a failure. Uh, I don't know how I was able to do that in Music Maker. Probably the things lined up better. Of course, I'm not just dragging in some random samples. Stuff that doesn't necessarily work well together. Let's delete some of it. Okay, that sample, uh, yeah, those definitely do not fit well together. You know, let's start the track with that one. But the question is, how well does this one loop? Well, it kind of loops, but it's not great. Well, maybe we should add some other elements. I mean, this is just kind of a throwaway arrangement. Uh, we're not going to do anything useful with it. Mm, maybe not really necessary. Perhaps some bass. You know, this one will be alright. Okay, let's loop this thing a few times. Oh, you see. Um, oh, hey. These actually kind of line up properly, but they still don't really adhere to the Cubase grid. Although it does seem to fit properly with this pad sound, but it's just that, that uh, those drum loops don't fit nicely. So let's see what it sounds like. Well, it totally doesn't fit well together. <laughs> so there you have it, that was a bit of a failed experiment. Uh, as you can see it's not easy finding things that fit well together. Uh, some of the loops don't actually align properly on the grid. Some of them repeat nicely and line up with other loops properly, but the drum loops don't. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. Uh, I don't know how I got around this in Music Maker. Uh, I think back in the day probably had the same problems if my memory serves me right. But uh, with a bit of preservation you could actually whip up something somewhat interesting. Even though you were really limited by um, the loops that you've got. And at some point well you've overused many of the same ones. And the things that you make uh, tend to sound kind of the same. 
nowadays I don't have these limitations anymore because while in Cork Gadget I just work with MIDI and I have so many different instrument sounds that I can use. And in Cubase I can easily add like a Yamaha Reface DX or a Volca FM or some sound from an iPad and I'll just use MIDI and then record it as audio to mix it. It's infinitely uh, more advanced and capable but still 20 years ago Magic Music Maker was quite alright if you didn't know anything about how to make music and you just wanted to whip up something together uh, at least you could get something out of it. Although yeah, it just requires a little bit of uh, preservation and experimentation. And what I did here was just, well, quickly throwing stuff together. Uh, back in the day I would spend uh, many hours, several days uh, in the weekends and kind of in the evenings uh, arranging a song uh, with this method. And yeah, it usually would turn out alright as you could hear in the earlier examples. So with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye bye!